in November. So there, 40 years. So uh, first thing I'd like to do is tell, tell you all uh, that it's my wife, Amy Critchett's birthday. Yay! So, uh, so anyway, yeah. Thanks, Karen, for the invite. So, uh, this this is all. This is about the Predator Arm. So, the Predator Arm came about in somewhat of a convoluted way. But basically, there was some interest, uh, you know, a year and a half ago or so, from from people in the art world. And I've always, you know, SRL has always operated on the periphery of the art world. We've done all sorts of shows, but we've never been in the museums, really, or in the galleries. It just hasn't happened. You know, I never really was very interested in it. Part of the reason I did SRL in the first place, or started it, was because of my uh, annoyance and frustration with some of the things I encountered when I started to get involved in the art world right after I left college. Basically, the ones that I'm not using every day and so why not get rid of a couple of them, you know? And so lo and behold, uh, in the beginning of this year, we did a show at the Marlboro Gallery in New York City. And uh, you know, we had a great, some of the people who worked on it. You saw some of the video in Marion's film of when, uh, and to answer the question of the movie, <laughs> yes, it could have been a fucking, it could have been yeah. <laughs> That would have been worse. It was 20 below with the windshield factor out there on the street running those machines. But uh, anyway, so that was, but, but you know, for instance, the robots inside were made by Kim Rick. You know, so we did, we did a show at the opening. We did a show at the opening and demoed things like the pitching machine inside the gallery shooting boards at 200 miles an hour and a few other things. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. The, yeah, the show was up for five weeks. We had some things moving around a little bit for the five weeks that were, you know, minor annoyances. But uh, in the end, Nobody actually bought a machine. Machine that does. I'm gonna make a machine that will try to will find you. It'll pick a target out from a group of people and it'll try to it'll try to kill you. <laughs> and so this is what this is what I came up with. Basically, it's um, you know you can see this is just the, the conceptual drawing of it. It lives inside a cage of bulletproof plastic, half inch thick bulletproof plastic. It uses a real sense uh, 3D scanning sensor, which they they just came out in January. This year, and so uh, actually they came out a little. We got them up. We, you know, I met the people from the heavy lifting. So what we've got is we've got a. We what this machine is is it's basically it's using the Intel Real Sense sensor up on top of it there, and it's looking out. You know, it has a range of about eight or ten feet out. It's looking out and mapping out what's in front of it, and then using a combination of algorithms, it decides who's the victim. And then it starts tracking the victim. It starts tracking the victim, and then, uh, and then when it, when it, when it, you know, once it decides, it starts, tra it starts tracking the victim. Uh oh, where did I go here? Oh shit! Oh, there it is, right there. Okay. And I'll show you real quick what these guys. Just a, a, a quick example. But basically, the camera puts out all this. Telemetry information that lets you, you can't really see it that well there, but it puts out all this telemetry information that tells you what angular position your target is. Like basically, in this video, David told it to recognize his hand. So when he moves his hand around, it's tracking it in real time. So, you know, there's a few, there's a few things or a few requirements for an SRL machine, even though this is like, you know, uh, uh, just a, an actual a sculpture, basically, more or less. There's a few basic requirements. And then, well, of course, I, I should just go back to 
So the, the CEO came over. He was like, I like this idea. We're going to put this in the main corporate office in Switzerland. <laughs> I, didn't, I told him exactly what it was going to do and how fucking crazy it was going to be. It's like, you know, which I will explain in a minute. And he goes, yeah, I want to, I'll do it. And so I was like, okay, I've heard that before. Heard that. I'll do it story a lot of times, right? See you later. But he went to the gallery, looked at everything in the gallery, and goes, and put the, wrote the check. Boom. <laughs> wrote the check. So half of the check. So, but, you know, that's still... You know, it's the real deal, man. I mean, it's like a real, a real sale of some kind. So, of course, there's a few requirements. Like I'm getting, I get back to that. So, there's a few. Anything about SRL, there's a few things that have to. I mean, obviously, the kill thing, right? Any machine in SRL has to be capable of killing somebody. I mean, I know my wife doesn't like to hear it, but basically, that's the bottom line. They all can get you in the end if you're not careful. So that was already, that's, that's the bottom line right there. So we already, we checked that off. The next thing is, it has to be so complicated that it's, no one is ever going to try to copy it. You will never have an imitator because it's so not worth the amount of time you would have to take to make anything, imitate anything like it. So the, the, that, that part is all about making it as absolutely complicated as possible. And you know, with the goal to, to get, really get some extreme performance out of it. So, you know, it, it seems pretty simple. So this is, you know, this is uh, you know, I showed you like the, the concept drawing. Uh, there's a little bit of tracking stuff. David back there can run it live in a little bit here, and you can practice being targeted. <laughs> this is uh, this is just a quick this is basically, every, you gotta make a cardboard mock-up. I don't care how much canned stuff you have, you gotta make a cardboard mock-up. Uh, this is the second piece. And then there's a third, a third curved section that comes out here and then has the claw on the front of it out about this far. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's got a little bit of mass to it, okay? So how do you, you know, how are you going to move it fast? You know, you don't want to have it go <laughs> like it's your best friend, you know. So, so at SRL, we had a, you know, we have actually, you know, we don't have to do everything from scratch at SRL. A lot of times, I mean, I like to look at all the machines as sort of prototypes for something else. And they come back around and they get used again sometime or reused. So one thing we have is the, uh, the air launcher. So the air launcher, I'm not going to really give too many details, but the air launcher is a gas launcher that I stole the idea from NASA. NASA had it in their NASA tech briefs back then. When you relieve the 800 PSI behind that, which is like a piston holding it up against that seal, it flies back in a millisecond and it releases that entire, all those ports to that tube. And that'll launch like a two or three pound or four pound uh, soda can full of cement, you know, a half a mile, basically. It launches it at five or six hundred feet per second. But the reason it does that is because you're getting the, you're not getting a buildup of pressure that's letting the, letting the can move before the pressure gets up to full pressure. Basically, the pressure, the full pressure is instantly behind the can, and then the can just is able to accelerate down the length of the barrel. So what I'm going to do for driving this is something very similar, but instead of having a concrete projectile firing out and hitting this lever here at 500 miles an hour, 400 miles an hour, what we're gonna do is that's gonna become an air cylinder, a very high pressure air cylinder. So when you fire the robot, it'll, the poppet valve will fly back and you'll, you'll release the native CO2 pressure behind like a three inch diameter uh, piston. So that's, I don't know, how many mathematics, how much, how many pounds of pressure is that? That's like a few thousand pounds of pressure instantly on that cylinder there. And so, another thing that's going on here is this. We're using, uh, you can see these two kind of sleeves up above there. The length that goes between here and the mount here, the pivot of this, and then the length that goes between this, this, and here. 
In there, we're going to have urethane springs. In the in the in a lot of industrial processes, they don't use metal springs anymore. They actually use urethane rubber. It's much stronger. They use it for stripping uh, material off dyes when they're punching stuff down. Those they don't use metal springs anymore. So I've used the urethane springs for a few things, like the spine robot, which I introduced here back in what 2009 when I started working on it. But that uses urethane springs too. But, uh, but in this case, what, what that'll do is, when, when, once when this thing fires, the urethane springs will compress instantly, and then probably around 100 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour, they'll make a lot of noise. And so even if you're expecting it, it's gonna scare the fuck out of you. <laughs> it will also make dents in the plastic. And so the arm will be able to, it'll be, have about an 80 degree uh, transverse, at about a 90 degree elevation. So it'll be able to go all the way from your knees up to your face. Wow. And, uh, and so, uh, so anyway, that's the, the basic thing for, uh, you know, uh, Karen and David are doing the programming. Roger Carr back here helped me with the drawings, some of the 3D drawings that I ended up using for this, uh, for the CAD. And uh, Peter Luca is probably going to help us a little bit on some of the hardware program with the servo motors and stuff. The, the, the transverse and the up and down is just going to be handled a lot by, uh, we have like four, I think 500 watt uh, F, uh, servo motors, Emerson, just modern AC brushless servo motors with encoder feedback. And so, uh, and so that's basically it. You know, it's basically just a, a machine that like hunts you and tries to kill you. Now, another, another reason why I decided to do this was because, because, uh, because I, have had, I got this five axis CNC, a big German five axis CNC, and I used it a few times, but I don't know if anyone has used those kind of machines. I really get to learn how to do this, and I was like, this is the perfect excuse for that. And so, and the, and the thing about something like this, like this is like, you know, this machine doesn't have a lot of sound and noise. It doesn't have like a bunch of other machines around it to bolster it. You know, it's just fucking on its own in a little box. <laughs> and so how do you attract, you know, SRL is all about intensifying the experience and creating a kind of a believable thing, you know, like a living world of machines or whatever, you know, for the shows. But in this case, it's more like creating something that seems like it's alive. So it'll have like, kind of like, Fit, you know, it'll have like characteristics like it'll hunt, you know, when, it, when it's trying to decide. You know, the things that animals do, like when your cat gets ready to kill a bird or something like that, it goes through a whole process of like how it moves around and stuff before it really decides to go for it and kill. And so, uh, you know, this is going to have a host of, of things like that, but a lot of it, I think, is just the look. I mean, there's something really creepy when you think someone spent a lot of time doing that. That's kind of, there's something really like kind of fucked up about that, right? Like you could, I could be making aerosmith-based parts, right, for a rocket or something, or something really practical, right? Like a weapon. I could be making like nuclear bomb cores or something like that, but I'm doing. This is what's happening with it. So, you know, there's something there's something kind of creepy about that, I think, but also just. It just, you know, it's just machine time, though. That's the cool thing about it. But I did really want to learn how to operate these because the goal, too, is to set, you know, there's the SRO goals that I laid out. We always try to satisfy those with these uh, things we make in SRO. But there's machines and all their fancy equipment and tools. You want to make something that they look at and they go, that looks like money to me. You know, because it does, you know, it has that weird, creepy look like, you know, it was made in, on some, you know, it's like it came from another planet or something like that. And so that's kind of the idea. If anybody wants to feel what it feels like, if you want to caress it or something. So basically, it would stand all the way out like that, but then with one more stage, one more stage on it. So I think it looks pretty good, personally. Who wants to look at it? So it weighs, right now it weighs, it weighs about 20 pounds, so probably on the end it'll probably weigh about 25 pounds. I mean, my physics, if there's, Greg Lay could probably figure out exactly how many pounds of force are required <laughs> to extend that. Because we don't have a lot of friction, it's all like, it's all low friction bearings in there, so. 
It would be great to have someone calculate that. Well, but it's 4,800 pounds of thrust from the three and cylinder. Okay, and so if we've got if we've got 25 pounds of weight, how fast can we accelerate 25 pounds with 4,800 pounds of force? Well, <laughs> that's easy for you to say. <laughs> so yeah, so like everything, I S S R L everything else else, I just sort of make this stuff up. This, you know, I just do the mechanical stuff. I'm just a mechanic, you know, and I just do. I like the I like doing the mechanical stuff. Really, I'm not really an electronics person at all. Even though sometimes I do a little bit of that, it really is something that the other fantastic crew get to do. But, uh, I mean, I don't know. Let's see, what else have we got? This is like how you, like all these things are, you have to think about every cut and how you're doing it. Basically, this, this is a four by four inch block sticking vertically out of that uh, table. And it gets cut down until it looks like uh, this thing here. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting way to, it's, you know, now that I've done it for a bit, I'm, you know, I'm getting pretty good at it, even after a couple, after a month or so, I kind of feel pretty comfortable. It doesn't take very long. It takes a day or two, day or two to make these parts, actually, each one. It isn't too bad for a rube. <laughs> and, Tell uh, us about your new legs. <laughs> different real sense demo. So you can see in, there's one, in one, the one demo here in the bottom left, Basically, it's a it's a it's identifying basically your uh, I think that's for a skeleton detection, right? Isn't that? Yeah. So that's skeleton cloud. detection. So that's detecting a skeleton inside a body, and it divides all the people in the scene in front of it into different colors. So it, you basically it, it designates every moving body as a different kind of color, and then maybe David could run the the demo. I mean, these, the hardware is pretty cool with the real sense sensors. It's just that Intel never really finished them. You know, like their demo, their own demos didn't even work up until I think recently, maybe. I don't even know if they work now. But uh, but there were a lot of complaints about that. But I guess that's just the way everybody releases those things these days. Period of time. Uh, somewhere in Switzerland. I can't really give you, I don't want to give you too much information. But anyway, I'm not I'm making it up. It really was the, the CEO, but I don't really want to name any names, you know. I don't want to embarrass anybody. But, uh, Do you have to sign anything that said you can't disclose who you're working for? NDA? I don't have to sign anything. Well, I have to sign NDAs all the time, but that's not for this. Yeah. I, sign, I sign plenty of NDAs whenever I go into these places for scavenge their equipment, but yeah. <laughs> Pardon me? Gotta have a eight stakes, 400 horsepower supercharger running in. And, yeah, I told him how to do it, basically. I was gonna send him the plans on how to do it, but then he died, so. I never got a chance to follow up on the conversation, but you know, that was, <laughs> everyone said that was kind of unusual. I thought it was okay that he came up and chit-chatted for a minute, but you know. This I know is going to drag them in. They're going to all see this. All these tech rich people that never collect any art and like throw their handkerchiefs at like you artists after they've blown their nose on. They're going to all look at this kind of stuff and they're going to go, "We love tech art. We're just going to start buying it all up." So all of us will be rich. Yeah. <laughs>